This question about decimals is really quite hard, isn't it? I think part of what makes it so hard is the weird rounding that they're doing, right? They're, usually, we would round a decimal up to the nearest integer if the tenth digit is 5 or greater, and we would round it down if it's less than 5. But that's not what they're doing here. Here, they, they're, I don't know why, but they're choosing to round the decimals up whenever the tenths digit is even, and round it down when the tenths digit is odd. That's a odd, pun intended, uh, it's an odd way of rounding. Now then they tell us that of these 30 decimals, 10 have a tenths digit that is even, which implies that the other 20 have a tenths digit that is odd. I do know that they all have a tenths digit because we were told that none of the 30 is an integer. Now when they add up all of the rounded numbers, we get E, and when we uh, add up the original numbers, we get S. And they're asking uh, which of the following could be a value of E minus S, the difference. Now the, the difference between a rounded number and an original number is called a rounding error. Normally for a decimal, if you would round up you know, 3.5 to 4, then the rounding error could be as big as half, 0 0.5. If you round it down, you know, 3.49 to 3, then the rounding error could be as large as, in that case, 0 0.49999. But in this case, what could be the rounding error in each of these numbers? Well, for 10 of them, we're rounding them up, and when you round them up, you're either rounding from 0.8 something to all the way down to point zero something. Like even if you had 3.0 whatever, that would get rounded up to four. What a, what a strange way to round numbers. But anyway, that's what they're doing. So for the 10 numbers, we're rounding up by as much as one, really, because if it's 3.0000001, that would get rounded up to four. So we're rounding them up by as much as one each, there's 10 of them, we're rounding them up by as little as 0.1, essentially, because the biggest number that would get rounded up would be something like 3.899999. That would get rounded up to 4, and it's only getting rounded up by about 0 0.1. So we're rounding 10 of them up by anywhere between 0 0.1 and 1 each. And then we're rounding the other 20 down. So by how much are we rounding them down? What would be the rounding error in those cases? At the top, you'd have something like 3.99999, which would get rounded down to 3. So rounding down by 1. And at the bottom, you just have 3.1 rounded down to 3. So rounding down by 0 0.1. So it looks like we have some kind of symmetry here, right? For the 10 numbers, we're rounding up by anywhere between 0 0.1 and 1 each. And for the 20 numbers, we're rounding down by anywhere between 0 0.1 and 1 each. So if we want to come up with some kind of logical range of the total rounding error at the end of the day, we'll have to look at the extremes. If all of the rounding ups were by 1 each, and all of the rounding downs were by 0.1 each, then the total rounding error, we go up by 10 and down by 2, so up by 8. In the other extreme, we're rounding up by the smallest amount possible, 0.1 each for 10 numbers, and we're rounding down by the maximum amount, amount possible, so we're rounding down by 1 each for 20 numbers. That would get us a rounding error of negative 19. Now, since they're asking for uh, E minus S, right, the estimated sum minus the actual sum, that difference would be the rounding error that we just discovered. We have a range for it. It's anywhere between negative 19 and positive 8. It turns out that the first two Roman numerals fall within that range, and that's why the correct answer here is B. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.